Welcome back, everyone, to the Culture Base Podcast. I'm Dustin. He's Blake. It is the middle of December. Mm. I feel like I just blinked and that happened. Uh, speaking of being in the middle, we're just past the midway point with this episode of our series on the six building blocks of scalable teams. How do you feel about it so far there, Blake? Good. <laughs> You're like, thanks, Blake. Thanks. Like a Bill Belichick answer. Yeah. Next yeah. question. <laughs> no, I do feel good. I feel like it's it's important to hit that foundation aspect that we hit on the vision and the culture. And then last week talking about the attraction. And I do think, especially with what we're getting in today on onboarding, this is where the rubber starts hitting the road, right? This is when you either keep people or you don't keep people. So mm -hmm. this is before then retention is the foundations getting built for the idea of retention. Now they're with you. Now it's about retaining the right people. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's uh, it's really interesting as Blake and I are preparing for this episode and we're seeing all these different st statistics out there about onboarding. And there are some real shockers out there, folks, that we're going to share with you today that we found in our research. But uh, like me, it may not have shocked you. Uh, you might be like, you know what? That sounds shocking. But when I think about it, it's true. So we'll get into that in a second, a little teaser for you. Yeah. But I want to remind you that here at the Culture Base, we're here to help leaders know what they're about, show where they're going and build those scalable teams that we're talking about to help get them where they're going. Um, I would love for you to uh, rate and review us if you're listening to this on an audio podcast platform. It really helps get this content out further to those who need it as well, like yourself. Um, if you can like, subscribe, and ring the bell on YouTube, that would also be super helpful, and you'll be notified every time we drop new content. Little crit clips and reels and shorts, not the crips or the bloods. That's not what I was doing. <laughs> Blake's face goes, crips and bloods. We're into that now. That's not it. We're not saying that. We're saying clips and shorts and reels, all the little video things. If you're just like, you know what? I don't have time for the full episode. Just give me the nuggets. We're dropping nuggets over at YouTube. So make sure you're there. You can find us at the culture base. Um, if you would love to chat with us about any of these topics that we're talking about or any of these building blocks of uh, scalable teams, you can find us at the culture base, B A S E dot com. Uh, you can click on a button there to chat with us for a free 30 minute uh, just kind of consultation for us to be able to dig in there and see what's really going on and, and provide you with some real practical resources right there on that call. Uh, you can also find us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook at The Culture Base, uh, as well as YouTube where you're watching this, hopefully. Uh, let's see. Anything else I need to mention there? I think we're good coming up to the end of the year let me just say before we get into this right here at the top of the episode we at the culture base had um uh a bit of uh some brainstorming the other day and there's some really cool stuff coming from the culture base let me just tell you there's some really exciting content coming your way and some ways that we're going to help you achieve these scalable teams that we keep talking about in the new year it's going to be incredible i can't wait uh, but on today's episode, we're going to talk about onboarding. It is part four of uh, the six building blocks of scalable teams. Listen, Blake, you know what? Hiring, mm. only a portion of the building process. Yeah. In this great culture you're, that you're trying to build, right? That's what we're doing at the culture base. But gaining key talent, then wishing them luck in the complexities of your company is a grave mistake that can bring the whole thing crashing down. So. Once you've got them, once you've attracted them, you've you've got the vision, you've got the culture piece down, you've got your attraction piece down. So you've hired them. Once you've got them, how do you unleash them to build a legacy for you? Hmm. Yeah, we always talk at the culture base about how this whole process is like 180 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's the 90 days up and to the point of hire where that contract is signed. And then there's like another 90 days right after that. That's we're smack dab in the middle. The fact that this is the middle of this series is appropriate because it is the middle of the process too, yeah. right? So this is right where it starts. And I mean, hiring the um, attracting, finding, vetting, uh, hiring and multiplying we are right smack dab in the middle and we need to start helping them understand 
what it really is, whether they're going to start believing your brand, whether they're going to start believing um, whether you really are who you said you are. Mm. They think just as much as people who hire people tend to be like, I'm sure we're only getting 20% like of the real who they are as we're hiring. Chances are you're probably, they're probably saying the same thing. We probably only got 20% of the real person, right? And the real company. And so they're coming and they're saying, do they really value what they said they valued? Do they really believe like, this is what your team member is saying about you. And they're looking in and they're saying, do they really believe the things they say they believe? Do they expect the things they say they expect? Because you can say till you're blue in the face, hey, you've got to show up right on time. And right, if you're not here right on time, you're out of here. And the first time they show up late and you're like, oh, it's okay. And the second time you're like, yeah, no problem. And the third, well, then you don't, you don't care. <laughs> like you don't have accountability there. You don't have expectations. This is a trying to vet you now. You vetted them. Now they're starting to vet you. Do you believe the things you say you believe? Onboarding is the most pivotal time. I think it is the most pivotal time to whether you are going to keep people or you're going to let them go. Okay, so this is when we start getting into some of the fun statistics. According to the employee onboarding, uh, a great onboarding experience ensures 69% of employees or team members stick with their company for three years. So you're going to 69% of people who have great onboarding are going to believe in the company and 69% of them are going to stick around for three years. That's a long time. Like it, it doesn't sound like a long time because we're used to hearing boomers say, Oh, I've been here for 40 years. Right. But three years is like a millennial saying 40 years. Okay. So this is where we've got to be like, Oh, okay. that's a, that's a good statistic there. I've been here like forever. I have been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like an eight-year-old who's like back when i was two and yeah like, when i when i was little yeah when i was little and you're like okay cool um you're still little you're you're still there so on the flip side 41 percent of team members who don't receive good onboarding experience they're going to start looking for another place to work within the first 12 weeks that's sick so you, everything you just spent 90 days ahead of time developing, making sure you have the right people, hiring process, interview process, calling references, asking good questions, all that work. And if you don't have a good onboarding process within 12 weeks, they're going to start looking elsewhere. Why do you think that is Dustin? I think it because it shows like you said, the true colors, it shows that you, what you actually truly believe, but I think it shows what their experience is going to be like mm. throughout their tenure there. And if they're going to be there for the forever amount of time of three years, <laughs> you know, then they're going to want to, they're going to know really quickly. Is this something that is worth me sticking around for? I equate it to a really great or a really terrible first date. Mm. You know, you think the interview process is the first date, but that's just kind of like the courting phase where you're just kind of kicking around at a social party and you got a couple cocktails and somebody introduces you to somebody. Laughing, right? Yeah, you're swiping stuff around the corner. I don't know what I don't know what you do. I'm not I'm I'm so out of the game. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> but uh it's like a really great or a really bad first date. A really great first date, you end it with, when can we see each other again? Mm. A really bad first date, you end it with, how do I give you a number that you believe is mine, but it's not really mine? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yep. I got to get. Uh, that's what I think it's like, Blake, to be honest with you. And I can tell you from personal experience, I've had some really great onboarding and I've had some really terrible onboarding. There was one in particular that I remember. I'm not going to say who it is because I don't want to, it's not worth it. But I will just tell you that I showed up for this one. And this was a salaried position. This is not like a hourly in McDonald's. Like this is a salaried position. I showed up and they, I go, great. Where's my, where's my office? They go, oh, right this way. 
they take me into this area. They show me this room that is filled with these giant printers. And there is one little desk in the corner that looks like they found it on the side of the road. There was nothing on the desk. Actually, there was a bunch of junk left in the desk from a previous employer. And it was just like, here you go. Good luck with it. And I, I spent the next like two weeks just trying to get my office functionable. Yeah. Like what a waste of valuable time. Not to mention that it took almost a full year for me to get through everything that they said that I needed to get to in order to onboard. Yeah. A year. Oh yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Like what a waste of resources. And so if you can just put a little intentionality behind it, Blake, I think it goes a long way. When we're talking about these, these building blocks, we have the foundation of clarity that we talked about, right? We talked about vision and culture is the foundation of these building blocks uh, that we that we call clarity. This middle yeah. section here is what we call identify. And this is where we're identifying who is going to be on your team and who's going to stick around the longest. And, and we talked last week about the attraction part of that. Today, we're talking about the onboarding part of that. This is the middle. This is the glue of this building project, like Blake talked about. This is where you're going to find out, do you have a winning team? or not. And it's, and so many employers think we just hired the wrong person. Oh yeah. We just, we just hired the wrong person. We, we made a mistake somewhere back in the attraction phase. Uh, when we hired this person, I would, I would, I don't have any stats to back this up, but I would, I would be willing to bet that it's probably an onboarding issue. Yeah. Because you set them up, you had a horrible first date. Yep. And now they don't want to come back. But they have to because you're the one hold the paycheck. Yep. And you see how this relationship has already begun in this yep. just terrible, mm -hmm. like just very toxic, unhealthy way. Yeah. And that, that's what a lot of us get into, I think, with our with our team members as we're onboarding. You know, I think as well, we get to see how much truly a business cares about production and not just like checking off a box. At the end of the day, I know how much you care about production and being a good company by how good your onboarding is. End of story. I know that you care about production if your onboarding is phenomenal. Because very much just like Dustin said right there, he went into an experience. They gave him, hey, here's where you go. All right. Are we producing? Okay. First off, they don't know. Okay. And they don't know how to train. And so they act like they know. They play this whole like, oh yeah, it's, you just go, you just got to do these things. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. So that's a huge problem. If you don't know how to set someone up for success, then you haven't done your due diligence on knowing how to be productive in your world or how to be a good company that works well and does the things they want to be doing. If that stuff doesn't make it to your onboarding, what you value doesn't make it to your onboarding, your onboarding's trash. Yeah. And let me just say this too. And this is kind of goes against what we're saying today, but I just feel like it's like a necessary disclaimer. Let's say Blake, you don't know what you're doing and you didn't take the time to get the clarity piece down. You didn't take the time to do the vision and the culture and then even the attracting portion, right? Even if you're, you're, you're striking out, you got zero batting percentage, right? If you get to this point and you don't know what you're doing, just say, Hey, look, this is a brand new position. Yeah. We have no idea what we're doing here. The main thing that we need from you in your first 90 days, your first 12 weeks is to tell us how bad we really don't know what we're doing. Yeah. So, and then we'll build your, and then we'll build the next couple years of your life around the things that you found in the first 90 days. Like, yeah. just say that, like, it doesn't take like this, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if it's just you and you're just trying to figure it out, like, just say, Hey, I don't know. Yeah. We're trying to figure it. We're trying to figure it out. Don't, it, I'm not saying that's the way to go. That's like a last resort, but at yeah. the very least, like, don't just pretend like, you know, what's going on. Yeah. And then you stick them in a print print room with a used desk that with a bunch <laughs> of leftover junk in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you don't, and we're going to jump into strategy here in just a second. You don't have to be perfect right out the gate. Okay. This is about progress, not perfection. Okay. Every, 
every new onboarding is someone's first time to your company. So they don't know what the last onboarding was like, and they don't know what the one two times before it was. But the idea is how do we make this better for the team? How do we make sure that when they come on, they have more clarity? How do we make sure that we can say, well, in our slide deck, I know we said this. I don't know why they don't believe it. Well, you said it once and in a time that you were saying a million different things and they were trying to like just absorb it all. Um, do you, I don't know if shoe carnival was like a national thing, like a national chain. Do you remember it? Was it? Okay. I mean, at least on the East coast it was. Yeah. So I, I just used to remember, and I saw this on game shows too, but they would have this, this like this chamber you would get in that almost looked like an old phone booth and it would just blow money and coupons all around. You had to grab it all. That's onboarding for the person coming into a company is they're trying to grab whatever they can of value and hold on to it for dear life, but they're getting like just obliterated by tasks, values, standards. It's a lot. Okay. So being kind in this time is really important and being clear, which means saying things a bunch, you know, like, man, I feel like I'm having to speak at a, a five-year-old level. Good. You're getting closer. Okay. Because it is important to speak very simply and, and just to make this an easy process. So strategy, part of your strategy needs to be that you are doing reviews with your current team before you even jump in to your next onboarding, or you're about to go in, Go talk to your team and ask them this one really important question. Go up and say, what do you wish you would have known day one? What do you wish you would have known? What are those things you wish you would have known day one coming in onto this team? What did you feel, um, what did you feel like was really well explained? What do you feel like wasn't explained that you still aren't sure about? And you start to do this, um, this feedback loop for your onboarding. And again, you're just going to continue this process on your strategy of what needs to be there. I mean, we, we saw really quick that we needed to have specific trainings on our platforms that didn't need to be right when they were hiring on and signing all their information and stuff. We, pr we were like, and, and we're seeing it even more, we need to do individual trainings on some of these platforms. Don't just do a whole platform training day because what's going to happen is all the stuff they're trying to learn is going to cross and it's going to look real mixed together. Unless you say today, all we're going to focus on is how to get paid. So we're going to look at how you turn in your time, how you log your cost codes. That's all we're going to focus on. Okay. The next day now we're going to look at this thing and we're going to talk about this process but if you just throw all of that, that's not being kind. It's not giving them the ability to the next day be like, okay, yesterday we went over this. Show me how to do that. Now you're getting muscle memory in there and they're learning in a different way. But your strategy has to be about what is the employee experience? This is, you know, your customer surveys. You want to know how you're doing to a customer and how to be better to bring this world-class customer service to your customers. How do you bring that to your team? That's what this strategy is about. Yeah, it's all about intentionality, which I think is can be an overused cliche sometimes, but sure. it really is true. Like if if you put the same intentionality in their first 90 days that you did in, in the previous 90 days leading up to that. So we talk about mm -hmm. the, the kind of the 180 day timeline on either side, uh, 90 days on either side of the actual hire date. If you put as much intentionality after the hire as you did before the hire, mm -hmm. then you'd be setting people up for a lot longer success. You'd be lowering your retention rate. You'd be increasing revenue, all the statistics that we see. So if strategy is the roadmap to get there, then and logistics are the how to the strategy. And 43% of new hires waited more than a week for workstation logistics and tools to be in place. I was in that 43%, yeah. same thing. Just like, here's the room, here's the desk with trash in it. I got no laptop, I got no power, I got no lamp, I got no stapler. Like I got <laughs> like nothing to yeah. do what it is that I'm supposed to be here to do. It's just a, a, a good luck. But what are some of the other other like what are the what are the logistics? How, do, how does that strategy of filtering the process kind of hit the road for us here in the logistics portion, Blake? Yeah. So this is when you start 
figuring out all those things that you've got in place and then you do them and then you get feedback from the people going through that experience right there and you don't say the worst thing you can ask someone going through onboarding who already feels awkward they're probably around other peers the worst thing you can say to them is do you get it it's the worst thing you can say because i already know their answer yes i get it i understand this and you think this is what one of the biggest problems for hiring managers is they think they are doing phenomenal because they have zero questions asked that's bad okay and i'll tell you who hates the hiring managers are the operation managers because they end up running hiring 101 for what you should have got when you went through hiring and mm. then when ops comes to hiring and says you guys aren't you doing your job they don't know how to enter their time they go well we we told them we told them once yeah but you didn't you didn't do it with them you didn't make sure they got it right this is this is communication is the truest form of communication is when you know that they understood you not that you know that that they heard you but you know that they understood you right okay? if, if, if nothing else here it should be a i do it you watch mm -hmm. right yep we do it we do it together yep you you do it i watch and then you're on your own like it doesn't take a yeah. genius like at no. the bare minimum of onboarding yep. it should be that 100 it should be that so easy yep. i i do it you watch then we do it together yeah then you do it i watch and then you're on your own that's three times of them going through it rather than just well i i told them i, I told them hit that button when they didn't do it yeah they, <laughs> they know hit button they know I hit mean, button and i think also one of the other things that happens in the first 90 days that is such a, a detriment and a miss on being able to show what your expectations are as a team is having KPI sheets is having some kind of here is what is expected of you expectations. If you, yep. if you don't have that for every position that you hire very clearly to be able to say, Hey, we're hiring you on. Here's my expectation is that our 90 day review. Here are the things you need to be able to do. Okay. If at any point you feel weak on these or during our coaching calls, you say, I haven't got the opportunity to get into this. Let me know, you know, because this is how you will be judged. Okay. So, and, and you're putting it in their hands and they say, oh, I haven't got that experience. And if you tell me on our 90 days, oh, I just didn't have that, get that experience. You had an entire 90 days yeah. to raise a hand. Okay. That's, that's a moment. And we don't, this is good onboarding is not about babying it is about making sure you have the right people and part of our right people is we want people who will speak up when they're not getting something hey that's yeah. that's something we look for um so having that kpi sheet or what your expectations are is so important because and, and not that you want to terminate but if you have a clear like they're not they're not hitting what we need you need to be able to prove that how can you prove that if you don't have some kind of KPI or um, what what your expectations were, especially in writing? Okay, the reason we love it in writing is because it stays visible, right? It stays yeah. visible to them, and it's just like one of those. Oh yeah, I need to do that, right? This is I. It sounds chaotic. I love sticky notes for that reason because they remind me visual visually, and even though I could be like, oh, I wrote that note down in a planner somewhere, or I put that you know in a a notebook that's next to my desk. I don't always open my notebook up as I'm walking in and walking out of my office. Yep. But those kind of, hey, remember, these are what you're being held accountable to. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think something that we we didn't discuss prior, but we've we've talked about it on some of our other episodes. And uh it's it's a tool that 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 I often use when I'm coaching and consulting with with clients is uh to be able to have a clear this not that list and get your get your new team member speaking the lingo yeah. quickly. I'm like, hey, here um we call our break room the studio so if you hear people refer to the studio then that's what they're talking about it's a break room here's what's in the studio here's what it's for 
I'm just making up stuff at this point, but you get it. Like it's, it's, it's the language of your company and you can put that like really simply like on a really easy four by six card or an index card. You can print them really cheaply. Like I've done it before and I've printed them and I've, I've hand delivered them to everyone laminated, stuck them on their desk, handed them scotch tape, said, tape this to your computer monitor. Like those are some real simple, easy things that you can do. It takes your onboarding to the next level. Something else in logistics too, Blake, I, that we have in here is the welcome. And I know, I know you have some stuff that you want to say about it, but let me just say this too. We talked about the dating analogy. If you show up in the courting phase, if you met this person at the cocktail party and you were, had your hair together and you had a nice <laughs> outfit and you made sure that you were showered up, you might smell good. But then on the first date, you show up straight from the gym tell me if you think you're going to be more interested in another date with that person hmm. so Unless why do gym body looks amazing that's true which is all the time for blake thank you but <laughs> but that. it is none of the time for me <laughs> so uh how many how many times none more times uh <laughs> welcome the welcome here oh. on day one now we're not asking you to blow trumpets and make everybody embarrassed, but we we I, we are saying is that there's a certain level of expectation. There's a precedent that you have already set leading up to this in the previous ninety days. So when they show up on that first day, are they seeing? Is it a revelation to them of what? I, am I at the right place? You know, like in a bad like in a bad way, or is it the ah? There's Bill. I met him. He, yeah. he did my, he did my interview. There he is. Bill, you know, like <laughs> is you yeah. have that I mean, versus just like, oh, that's Bill. What happened to him? Is he going through a divorce? Like what is, yeah. <laughs> you know, like the welcome matters. It's first impressions. We all know this in business or in life. First impressions matter. And these are first day impressions. They matter even more because you're in, you're in a relationship now. Yeah. You, you've committed to each other. You've signed the dotted line. The HR paperwork is about to be filled out. Like, we're rolling. We're in this thing now. What do you got to say about the welcome, Blake? Yeah, I mean, exactly what you just said is why, um, like, software salespeople have usually have the position, or there's another position called the customer success manager, or who is just focused on making sure that from the sale to making sure all those things that they said would happen actually happened. That's why there's a whole position for this kind of thing is, is just to continue the process of making them feel comfortable because at the end of the day, all of this is about cognitive dissonance. And I know Dustin was laughing at me earlier. He told me basically if I had a pull string doll like Woody that he pulled, mine would be like cognitive dissonance is important. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> yeah, right. But it is cognitive dissonance, what they think and what they're experiencing aren't aligning. What they believe about it and what is, is not the case. So it's about minimizing cognitive dissonance and bringing clarity. So your welcome needs to kick that off really strong. Now, I agree with what Dustin said, be careful not to embarrass them because that's that's not a good place to start either. However, there are things you can do. We, um, and, and not always just like, hey, everybody, this is so-and-so. Why don't you tell us the three things you're most scared of? Like, yeah. you will terrify people. But there is a way to make them feel comfortable. First off, you come in and you say, hey, we know this is going to be really, like, a lot put on you right now, and we don't expect you to get it all. Okay, now you're taking off that, okay, there's going to be a lot. We're going to be here. If you ever have a question, here's who to talk to. Have that mm -hmm. person set up immediately. Here's who you talk mm -hmm. to right away. That's your yeah. customer success manager. Okay. That's your mm -hmm. onboarding success manager there. And then, yeah. so not that, hey, if you have a question about this, talk to this person. If you have a question about this, talk to this person. If you have a question about this, I want you to look up on an FAQ. No, mm -hmm. just give them one person. So yeah, they there's only a flow chart. Yep. Their one flow chart is talk to that person. Yep. Okay. They, the person who they need to talk to, they should know who, who to find out stuff from, but not, not the person who's brand new to this. It's, mm -hmm. that's just not fair to expect of them. So 
having things put together. One of our, we do a two week onboarding that is like, they go and learn a lot of the hands-on aspect. And one of the things that like, I always, we, we're getting closer every time. And that is making sure all the tools and materials that we have um, are all ready for them day one. So they don't feel like they're missing something. And mm -hmm. it's super hard when you hire, trying to make sure you have all that stuff, especially post COVID lead times are long on things. But at the same time, I, I'm like, man, I just want to have everything put together so that when they get there, they open up their box of tools and materials and they go, everything's here. I don't have to question, am I missing something? Right? So, cause that's again, cognitive dissonance. And then as far as like our welcome, we love doing, uh, right after the first two weeks or so we love doing at the end of their like boot camp, what we call it is just, we go to like top golf with everyone. We bring the leadership team, a lot of the managers that they're going to be working with. And we all just go to top golf. We have a smorgasbord of food and drinks and, and we just hit golf balls at random things in the middle of the fairway or whatever. Right? Like it doesn't matter. We're just there to have a good time. We, as the leadership, we love looking stupid at those times because it helps people lower their guard. Right. And, and feel free to ask questions. If they're not asking questions, that's a bad sign. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that leads us uh, smoothly into our distribution, which is the communication and accountability portion of uh, this onboarding SLD here. So on average, Blake, new hires are given 54 onboarding tasks Gosh. to complete. That yeah. is insane. But when I read that earlier, I was like, that sounds crazy. But if I think about my life experience and my work experience, I would say, yeah, that's pr an av I would say an average is 54. That's that sounds about right. And we try to cram all that in on on one day. And instead, we don't have like a, a really good logistics or strategy sh set out for us uh, in order to be able to kind of say, OK, today we're going to tackle these four things. And, and and, you know, and and a lot of these 54 onboarding tasks, like honestly, they could be uh, completed before they ever show up. Hey, fill out this paperwork before you show up on day one. Like, sure. do we really need, do we really need you to send you away for two hours while you go fill out paperwork? Or can we just maybe get that paperwork to you in ahead of time and have you fill that out and, and bring it in when you come? Because odds are some of this paperwork, some of the stuff you're going to have to put in is going to be like, oh, your, you know, social security number, or your routing number, or all these different things. You're like, I don't even have that information on me. I'm going to take, go home and get that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, just do oh, it. Yeah. Just go ahead and send it to him ahead of time. It's so simple, right? Yeah. Well, think about any form you've ever filled out. How, mm. Like how many questions on a form online, how many questions does it take for you to say, screw it, I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm just not even going to fill that. I don't even want this thing that I'm filling give, out. This form give me past me. eight and I'm probably done. I'm getting close. Exactly. And so if you're asking for their backup email address, don't like <laughs> there are, I, I think it's important to go through all of your <laughs> stuff and, <sighs> and look at your onboarding process now. Go through and see and ask, can, first off, can I eliminate this? I think that is one of the best tests to do first is go through your stuff. And do you have stuff in there? Like, do you have a spot for a fax number? Don't, please. Like, yeah. what are the things you have in there? 2024. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what, what are the things you have in your process that are just redundant and stupid? Like, if you're asking people what their thoughts are on Y2K, you, you haven't checked it. In a hot <laughs> second, okay. So take time, go through and eliminate then that just like Dustin was saying, if there is a way to get stuff done before they ever have to set foot on in a place where they're already going to feel uncomfortable, do it, let them do those things in a place of comfort where they can figure those things out. Like I'm telling you, a lot of these younger people today don't have their social security number memorized. They don't even know where their card is. Okay. They're calling their mom or knocking mom, on yeah. their door and figuring it out. And so let them do that in a place of comfort. So figure out the things first that you can eliminate next. What can you automate? Can you take all 30 forms that you have first off, knock that down to 15 somehow, and then take those 15 forms. And can you package that so simply that 
you could just throw that on like a sign now or a docu sign or something that they can do from their phone because you're going to think this is crazy, but they don't have a printer. They don't. I know none of them have a printer because they've been able to do everything online for all of their life. Why would we not meet with some of that to make it easier and just automate it? Hey, this is where you sign for this. This is where you sign for this. Hey, this is about deductions. You need to make your decisions and, and fill this stuff out. I mean, just make it really simple. And then the other part, I think, in distribution is try to batch like things. Okay. If you're going to spend a yeah. bunch of time on um, like, hey, it's really important first that they understand our time process and cost coding, then batch that as a thing. Okay. Right. Don't have that right up backing a whole bunch of other things where you're talking the same language across multiple platforms that will not be helpful. So batch those things. And then just again, I think it's, I know it was number one, but I'm making it number three or four or two. See what you can eliminate. Just see what's not important and whatever is important, leave it there. Because if you say everything's important, nothing will be important. So just try to condense down the real true importance that you're trying to get in this onboarding process. And, and part of this at the very end, I just say, after you go through this whole process with a group, ask them how it went and, and don't be like, how did we do like a, from a one star to a 10 star, because they don't, again, want to be uncomfortable. They're going to tell you 10, tell them, we know we've got stuff we need to get better. I want every one of you to give me one thing we need to do better. Just one thing, because then you're going to give them the, hey, we expect and assume we're not perfect. Tell me one thing we need to do better. Yep. Yeah, so good. I mean, we could talk for days and on all, all sorts of uh, different tips of strategy, logistics, and distribution. One that I know Blake mentioned, I just want to state clearly that if you can kind of have like an onboarding buddy, kind of like if you think back to kindergarten or preschool or whatever, and you had your had you had a line buddy that went with you in the line so that you didn't get lost. It's the same concept here. Mm -hmm. And I know that might sound elementary, but it really means a lot to have that one person that can go to. And if that person doesn't have all the answers, then they're trained up enough to be able to go find the answer for the new hire. They don't have to have all the answers. They don't have to be perfect. It's just someone that's been around long enough to know the lingo, to know where to find things, to know what, you know, protocol is on, on, on breaks and you know things like that right so uh just just have that person assigned have them trained up a little bit help them understand where they're at in that part of the process that 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 buddy system if you will help your buddy understand hey you're going to have this person they're going to check in with you once a week for 90 days um you're going to they're going to have your number they're going to have direct access to your slack whatever it is right and they're going to if they have a question you're going to be the one that they ask and uh just help them understand that that expectation is coming right for them to, and help your new person understand that expectation yeah. is there for them. Anything else, Blake, we need to cover in onboarding today? Have that onboarding success manager. Mm -hmm. Onboarding success manager. Absolutely. Got to have it. Uh, whether it's a role that already exists with someone else or not. But so next episode, we're going to be back. Episode 24, part five of this series, the six building blocks of scalable teams. We're going to be talking about development before we move on to the last one, which is retention or how to retain these top tier people and scale these teams like never before. We're going to close out the new year with this series or this year with this series before the new year we've got some incredible things coming your way in the new year stay tuned for all that until next time we'll talk to you on the culture base podcast